Okay, guys. So your discussion is focused already on bioethics and healthcare situations. So we have discussed several principles in bioethics. We have already talked about mm, the principles of autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, veracity, all of those principles. Now it's about time for us to understand how it is applied on specific healthcare situations that are commonly encountered in our setting. So um, there are many issues that we are encountering. And mind you, these issues tend to be complex and these issues could not be easily answered by one ethical principle. And then it's also wise for us to understand when you are dealing with these ethical questions or ethical issues, you always need to understand the cultural background the cultural background of the issue. Okay? So one typical example that we can talk about now, about the cultural background is abortion. If you would look at abortion in the Philippines, as I would always remind you, is abortion allowed here in the Philippines? Is abortion allowed here in the Philippines? So I can see that you're saying, no, it's not allowed. Yes, that's correct. No, it's not allowed here in the Philippines. That's why oftentimes if you are talking about ethics, we will discuss what are the pros and cons of abortion? But at the end of the day, it narrows back to the question, it is allowed, is it allowed here in our country? So the bottom line is that it's not allowed here in the Philippines. Hence, wala. Wala kang magagawa. So hindi talaga allowed or advocated for yung abortion. Eh, sir, bakit niyo pa tinuturo kung hindi naman pala pwede dito sa Pilipinas? If you have seen, guys, um, there is already an argument towards the legalization of abortion. Other than that, um, Western countries like that of the United States and then the other developed countries are already inclined on having abortion. In fact, they are doing it. No? They are doing it. Tayo lang po yung medyo resistant pa dun sa abortion. Now, let's deal about these issues. Now, first, let's talk about marriage. Okay? Just a recapitulation on what marriage is. Now, when I talk about marriage, my dear students, your marriage refers to special contract of permanent union between a man and a woman in accordance with the law for the establishment of conjugal and family life. Okay? Now, look at the word special contract. In other words, legal siya. Pag sinabi kong contract, okay? pag sinabi ko pong kontrata, when I say contract, it means that you are, okay? you are having two parties agree on something. Okay? Take note of that. Can you write that down? That there are always two parties in a contract. Ha? Wait lang. So, pag sinabi kong kontrata, ibig sabihin may dalawang party po na nag-usap para mag-agree on that contract. But look at the term. The term here is permanent union. Please be mindful, however, that this definition is from the Family Code of the Philippines. Uh, this one is from the Family Code of the Philippines, which is the legal basis of marriage here in the Philippines. So, pag sinabi kong permanent union, if we would look at the term permanent union, Pwede, bang anal ah, pwede ba ang divorce dito sa Pilipinas? Is divorce allowed here in the Philippines? Okay? So hindi. Okay? Kaya nga po sinabi siyang permanent union kasi when I say that we are married, we are supposed to be married for life. Okay? Kasi nga permanente siya. Tapos if you would look at it, since special contract siya, dapat nag-agree tayo from the start. Dapat nag-agree tayo from the start. Halimbawa, hindi pa ding sabihan ko yung girlfriend ko na, uy, magpakasal tayo bukas. Pagkatapos, after ng kasalan, sinabihan ko siya, uy, lahat ng property sa pangalan ko, wala dapat pangalan mo. Hindi pa pwedeng ganon. Because for a contract to take place, both parties should have understood the pros and cons, the benefits and the risk before entering the contract itself. Okay? Yan po yung prerequisite ng contract. Now, dito sa atin, Pwede bang dalawa yung asawa ko? Generally speaking, pwede bang dalawa yung asawa ko? Pwede bang tatlo? Hindi. Hindi. So halimbawa ako, okay? halimbawa ako magpapakasal ako kay person A. Kasi sabi ko kay person A, you're the love of my life. Okay, person A. Pagkatapos, five years later, na-discover ni person A. Salawahan pala ako. No? May, 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 may asawa na pala ako before kami ikasal. Okay? Kasado na pala ako kay person B before kami ikasal ni person A. Plus, right there and then, could declare our contract as null and void. Right there and then, person A could declare our marriage as null and void. 
that is po one example of nullity of marriage. Pag sinabi ko pong nullity of marriage, yes, kinasal kayo five years ago, pero ngayon nadiskubrihan na may malaki kang pagkakamali na sa walang visa na yung kasal na yun. Okay? In other words, parang pwede kong sabihin na person A felt, felt betrayed, person A was not able to be informed that I'm already married, and now that she knew about it, she has all the right to file for the nullity of marriage. And pwede na niyang sabihin sa sarili niya, single ako. Kasi itong nagpakasal na lalaki sa akin, okay, may kasado na pala sa iba. Okay, may partner na pala siyang iba. So, that's it. Now, another thing that we are looking into this definition is the term between man and woman. So, if you would look at the Philippine setting, with all due respect sa mga LGBTQ, ha, is it allowed to marry here in the Philippine setting if we are gays or lesbian? Let's say, for example, dalawang gay mag-marry or dalawang lesbian mag-marry. Okay? Sorry mga LGBTQ guys, so hindi pa tayo around mag-marry here in the Philippine setting. Because if you would look at it, this is a contract between a man and a woman. Okay? Just, just for the purpose of the learning. How about if it is a gay and the lesbian who will marry? How about if gay and lesbian yung mag-marry? Pwede kaya? Bakit walang sumasagot? <laughs> okay. So plus yun pwede. Kasi generally we're talking about man and woman. We're talking about male and female. We're talking about a person with a penis and a vagina. Okay? Because again, when I talk about sex, ha, when I talk about sex, we refer to the biological sex of an individual. When we talk about gender, it refers to your sexual orientation. Okay? So, ayan. Kung kaya't hindi pa pwede yung mga same-sex marriage here in the Philippines. So, entered in accordance with the law in the establishment of conjugal and family life. And if you would look at it, family, ano nga bang always sinasabi natin sa family? What is a family? Kahit elementary tayo siguro, sinasabi to sa atin, what is family? Mm, parang four words. What is family? When I talk about family, what do we say about the family? The family is always considered as the basic unit of? Basic unit of? Sinabi kong family, basic unit of? Okay, it's the basic unit of society. So plus, a family can only be formed through marriage. That's why, we value the importance of marriage kasi hindi naman pwede na tawagin natin basic unit of the society yan kapag wala pong marriage na nagbabind ng couples na. Okay? Now, dyan naman papasok yung question na, Sir, paano kong cohabitated? Paano kong cohabitated? Uh, ano po yung word natin for cohabitated, guys? Pag sinabi ko pong cohabitation, kasado po ba sila? May kasalan po bang naganap kapag cohabitation po ang nangyari? Okay? Wala. Okay? Ano nga ba yung word natin for cohabitation? What's the usual term that we use for cohabitation? Yung nagsama kayo sa isang bubong, pagkatapos you live. Okay? Live Very good. Okay? Nagiging live-in partner. Okay? Nagli-live-in na po sila. Okay? Yan pong ibig sabihin natin ng cohabitation. They live in together. They live together. They spend together, they spend life together, etc. Okay? Plus, with all due respect din ha, alam ko, iba't ibang pamilya yung pinanggalingan natin. Pero statistics would show na parami na po yung cohabitation. Okay? Parami na po talaga yung cohabitated family in our set. Okay? Marami na po nag-live in, ano? Marami nang nag-live in. Okay? Now, tayong mga nurses, we do not say that live in is good or bad. Okay? We are not inclined on saying that live-in is either good or bad. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na I live-in, masama. Okay? Hoy, nurses tayo ha, nurses. Hindi po tayo judgers. Okay? Kaya bawal po yung mga nagja-judge. I think kayo mismo may mga kilalang mga live-in partners. Okay? But please take note that legally, are they single or married? Are they single or married? Okay? Legally po, they are still considered to be single. Okay? Legally, they are still considered single. Okay? So, yan po ang mga dapat natin isip. Now, so again, tayong mga nurses and ethics yung pinag-uusapan natin, we do not judge these individuals. Ha? We do not judge these individuals. Alam nyo, lately may mga na, na namimita kong tao parang sinasabi na mahal na mahal ko naman siya pero ayaw ko lang talagang magpakasal. Okay? May mga ganong linya. Hindi, hindi ko alam. Ano. 
because maybe the traditional way of orienting us is that when you love somebody, you will be inclined to marry him or her. Pero I think we are we are also affected by the changes that are occurring. And then um we are also getting westernized, if I may say, on the way we think. Okay? But on that, ha, hindi ko sinasabi na mag in kayo. Ha? <laughs> Magpakasal kayo. Baka paggalitan ako ng mga parents nyo later on na nag in kayo. Okay? Plus, it's better for you. Ah, this is personal. This is not ethics. Um, But it's a, I would say that it's better for you to be committed. It's better for you to enter into a special contract than rather to be in a relationship which is hanging. Ha? Ma ma mas maganda po yung legal at saka yung ethical. Okay? So, do not be inclined na nasabi o mag in tayo kasi okay naman. Okay? Hindi ko sinasabing okay, pero hindi ko sinasabing hindi siya okay. Now, when I talk about marriage, these are the implications of marriage. It's a permanent union. So, hindi ko pwedeng sabihin na, uy, magpakasal tayo kasi mahal kita. Tapos bukas na amoy ko yung kilikili niya, sasabihin ko, break na tayo. Hindi ko kaya amoy ng kilikili mo. Okay? That may be a funny example, pero you know what? May mga naririnig akong ganong case. Na sir, first time ko siya kasi makatabi, hindi ko alam ganun pala kalakas yung body order niya. Okay? Parang gusto ko nang mag-divorce. Okay? So what? Huh? That's why before marriage, we always undergo what we call your marriage counseling. Okay? Before marriage, guys, we have what we undergo, what we refer to as marriage counseling. So, kinakounsel kayo. Ano nga ba yung implications ng marriage? Ano nga ba yung rights mo sa marriage? Ano nga ba yung responsibilities mo sa marriage? Okay? Halimbawa, pag pareho tayong mayaman, ipag-uusapan na natin, paano ba natin hatiin ang yaman natin? Okay? Parang mga ganon. No? Pag mga mayamang pamilya, alam mo, they are very particular about that. Ha? Na kahit daw conjugal property, 50-50% dapat. In case of divorce, ganito dapat. So may mga attorney pumapasok before marriage. Okay? So what I meant is that you need to have You, know, you need to be able to understand your partner before you marry your partner. Okay? It's very difficult for you to go on into a relationship. Halimbawa, sabihan, oy, magpakasal ka na bukas. Okay? Tapos na-realize mo, hindi mo pala siya gusto. Once you are already in marriage, you should have understood that you are already committed to this individual. Because again, there is no divorce in the Philippines and this is a special contract. And again, it is the foundation of the family And family is considered to be also the foundation of the society. So class, kaya always sinasabi na we take care of the sanctity of marriage. Because if we are unable to take care of the sanctity of marriage, no? if you are unable to take care of the sanctity of marriage, the foundation of the society will also be crumbled. Okay? That's what we think about. Now, Others, what are the characteristics ba of marital love? This is according to Pope Paul VI. Ba? So, marital love daw is considered to be human. In other words, there's flesh and spirit. Okay? More than emotion, it is the act of the will and grows in daily life, it is the union of the heart. So, class, pag sinabi ko pong human siya, okay? it's flesh and spirit. So, when we talk about marital love, marital love would really entail having sex. Ha? Hindi po pwedeng sabihin na oy magpapakasal tayo pero wala tayong sexual contact. Class part po ng marriage 'yan. And then if you would look at the, the purpose of the purpose of marriage, no. If you would look at it in biology, perhaps it would go back to one word which is I mean to a phrase which says survival of species. Okay? 'Di ba the purpose of reproduction is the survival of species. So it's both flesh and spirit. Okay? So, hindi pa pwede nakatawan lang yung nagmamahal pero yung isip hindi. Okay? That's not marriage. That's not even legal marriage. Then, pag sinabi po nating total, okay? special form of friendship, share everything unselfish and receives all and gives all. Now, pag sinabi natin share everything, eh, sir, pa paano kapag may krimen akong nakumit tapos isi-share ko kayo husband or wife? Plus, your, your sharing is actually protected by the bond of marriage. Okay? Okay? Halimbawa, ano, sinabihan ko yung asawa ko. Hindi pa po ako kasal, pero halimbawa lang. Okay? So, halimbawa, sasabihan ko yung asawa ko. Misis, alam mo, may nakumit akong pagkakamali. Okay? May napatay akong langgam. Okay? Halimbawa, ang ganun. Okay? So, my wife does not have the legal obligation to tell the public authorities. Because she is my wife. Hindi pa din sabihin na, oy ikaw asawa ni Gilbert, bakit hindi mo sinabi na may napatay siyang langgam? Okay? Hindi po pwedeng ganon. 
Okay? Because she is my wife. Kung baga, what I know, she deserves to know. And she does not need, she does not need to divulge it to anybody else. Okay? By law, my wife is also protected. Because, di ba, tayong nurses, halimbawa, may legal obligation tayo eh. Halimbawa, sasabihan ko si Nicole. Sabihin ko, Nicole, alam mo, may napatay akong langgam. Okay, langgam talaga. So, sabihin ni Nicole, ay dapat i-report ko so kasi namamatay siya. Pero yung asawa ko po, protected siya ng legal. Okay, she's protected legally. Not to tell that. Okay, hindi din po pepede na yung asawa ko, itatawagin po ng court. No? Tatawagin po sa court. Tapos sasabihin, oy, wife of Gilbert, testify against your husband. Hindi din po pwede. Okay? Because we are bound by the secrecy of marriage. Magagamit po ba sa iyo yun kapag nagkakasuhan? Um, pwede kang kasuhan, pero hindi pwedeng asawa mo ang gamitin para kasuhan ka. Okay? So, parang ganun. So, mayroon po tayong sa secrecy in marriage. Then, faithful. There should be faithfulness of God to His people and does not seek or abandon people. Okay? So, guys, payo ko lang naman dito sa inyo. Marami na po akong unfaithful relationship na na-encounter. No? Um, and we are not here to judge them. Ha? Take note of that. Baka kayo nga po is, uh, is also uh, have been experiencing this also. Okay? We are not there to judge. Ha? So, ano, pong, uh, ano lang pong payo ko sa inyo? Please be faithful lang sa mga partners ninyo. Okay? Huwag niyo pong simulan kasi once simulan niyo po, well, once once you will once you will start it, the cycle of trust and distrust will be there. Okay? The cycle of trust and distrust will be there. Okay? Eh sir, paano kapag kami nga mismo eh? Paano nga po kapag parents nga namin unfaithful? Okay? Do not follow. Ha? It's about time to break the cycle. Okay? Hindi ko sinasabi na masama ang parents na mga naging unfaithful. They also have their own reasons, guys. And in ethics, take note, we are not teaching you to deal with things black and white. We are not just looking at things as good and evil. So hindi ko pwedeng sabihin, ay unfaithful yung parent mo, evil yan. Hindi yun ganun ang tinuturo ko sa inyo. Ha? There are reasons in between. But what I can tell you from the perspective of a nurse is that once, once you are in a relationship, be faithful. Because once, you're, once that being faithful is questioned, okay, the, the cycle of trust and distrust would continue. Okay? So in our, in our case, we show that faithfulness of God to His people does not abandon or forsake. Okay? So guys, oftentimes sa marriage, no, yung problema lang po naman kasi is that there are temptations. There are temptations around us. So it's, it's already up to you. It's already up to you if you, will, if you will grab these temptations or not. And mind you, temptations, by the time that you will be doing it, may be as good as it sounds. Ha? Huh? It's really as good as it sounds. Kung baga, masarap po siya sa unang tikim kung pagkain po yung pinag-uusapan. Okay? Kung baga, masarap po siya. So it will, you, will, you will be, anong tawag na, you will be tempted to continue it over and over again. So you are being taught to be faithful. Ha? Huh? You need to be faithful. Okay? Next, another is that it's exclusive. It's a gift to one person, exclusion of all others, you and you alone. Okay? So, pwede mo nang sabihan yung nililigawan mo. Dapat exclusive yung relationship natin. Ha? Because according to Pope Paul VI, a marital love is exclusive. Okay? So, hindi po yan sharing. Hindi po yan sharing for everybody. Okay? Then, um, it's also love that goes beyond couple destined to raise up new life. And then, take note that children is considered to be a supreme gift of marriage. Ha? So, pag sinabi po nating children, depende din po yun sa couple, ano, kapag gusto nilang magkaanak or not. I came to realize that there are also couples who would say that they don't want, they don't want to give birth. No? Or may mga couples din po akong na-meet na they marry young, pagkatapos sasabihin na uh, for the first five years of marriage, hindi muna sila magkakaanak for them to enjoy their life together. Okay? So, there are couples like that. So, but then, take note that children is considered to be the supreme gift of marriage. Now, what are the grounds for annulment of marriage? So, may annulment po tayo. Take note, ha? we do not have divorce, but we have annulment. So, when we talk about annulment, this uh, declares marriage to be null and void. Okay? Nullity. Kaya nga po tinalo siyang annulment because it goes back to the word nullity of marriage. Now, ano pong, ano pong dapat nating tandaan dito? Kapag tayo po ay magpapakasal, halimbawa 18 to 21 years old ka pa lang, 18 plus is considered to be the age of consent, di ba? In other words, kung sa hospital, 
kapag hihingi ako ng consent, kapag 18 years old ka na, pwede ka nang magbigay ng consent for yourself. But take note, if you will marry before the age of 21, okay, if you will marry before the age of 21, dapat there will be a consent of your parents. Dapat may consent ng parents. O halimbawa, nagpakasal ka, age mo 19 years old, pinago mo sa parents mo, tapos pinakita mo lang sa pare, father, ito po yung signature ng parent ko, pinorge mo pala. No? Sa father, nag-consent na sila, pero nag-forge. Later on, when it is discovered that you forged the consent of your parent, your marriage will be declared null and void. Okay? Kasi nga, 21 years old or before 21 years old, you need the consent of your parents. Unless, if you have freely cohabitated with the other and live as husband and wife. Next, pag nalaman na, uy, may psychiatric problem, pag nalaman na, uy, may pagkabaliw, okay? So, during the time of marriage, or, so pwede po siyang ma-declare as na annulment then. Okay? So, kung nakikita nga po ninyo, I, I can't recall the specific name ng mga artista, pero parang may, may sumikat dati na nag-process ng annulment. And the one of the reason is mental incapacity. Okay? Yung isang reason po na na-state is mental incapacity. Now, Take note, ha? baka sabihin nyo, ah, sir, pwede naman pala, ano? later on, pag, pag ayaw ko siya, sabihan ko na lang yung korte na, uy, baliw yan, baliw yan. <laughs> okay? Hindi po ganar na, hindi, hindi po pwede. Ha? Hindi po ganun kabilis na, na sasabihin natin na, ay, baliw yan. So, um, ano nga ba? Dapat po, may process po tayong dinadaanan. And for that process to continue, it needs to be, uh, it needs to, to have the expert opinion of the psychiatrist. Okay? It will be an expert opinion of the psychiatrist. So the psychiatrist po will become an expert witness. May tinatawag po tayong expert witness. So your psychiatrist is considered to be an expert witness. When I say expert witness, siya po yung tatayo doon sa korte at siya ka sasabihin na, ah, okay. Person A is really mentally incapacitated to carry on marriage. Okay? Right there and then, that could be process for annulment of marriage. So again, ha, hindi pwedeng sisigaw ka lang na baliyo itong asawa ko, tapos nalinvoid na yung marriage nyo. Hindi pong ganun. May proseso po tayo. Pagkatapos, consent was obtained by fraud. Okay? Halimbawa ko kanina, no? yung, yung, yung si person A, nagpakasal kami, di niya alam, kasal na pala ako kay person B. So, fraud yun. Now, consent was obtained by force, intimidation, or undue influence. Pinilit lang, no? Parang sinabi, ito barel, pakasalan mo ako, or ito pag hindi, babarilin kita. Okay? So, kapag ma-prove na ganun, nullity of marriage din siya. Now, um, also, if the person is physically incapable of consummating the marriage with one another. Okay? Halimbawa, hindi mo alam na hindi po pala siya, hindi po pala siya, um, na hindi po pala siya Ano nga, hindi siya pala capable of giving birth. No? Hindi mo alam, tapos nagpakasal na kayo. So that could be a ground for nullity of. And then either party was afflicted with STD, sexually transmitted disease, which is serious or incurable. Okay? So that could be also a ground for nullity of marriage. Sir, pwede po ba ikaso sa lalaki if dalawa po pala yung... Yes, pwede. Yes, pwede pong ikaso for the nullity of marriage kapag dalawa yung pinakasalan. Okay? With all due respect naman to our Muslim brothers, so iba naman po yung case natin sa mga Muslim. Kaya nga, if you notice, I used the term generally earlier because um one exception, of course, is our Muslim brothers. Yes, so kapag nagpakasal ka sa dalawang tao, pwede mo po yung, um pwede nyo po yung i, uh, yeah, ikaso. Isumbong nyo po kay Tulfo. Hmm. Okay? Keeping aside, ah, hindi po ako advocate ng pagpapublicize ng mga concerns. No? Uh, with all due respect to Tulfo, pero okay lang. Hindi ko po masyadong hilig na yung concerns ninyo ipinapublicize. Okay? But yes, to answer your question, that is a ground for legal action. Now, how about for legal separation? Okay? So, pag legal separation, ano naman po yung mga grounds natin for legal separation? Physical violence. Sinaktan ka, bigla ka nalang sinuntok. Okay? Nagalit siya kung ano nung tinatapon ba ito sa iyo. Physical violence or moral pressure. Okay? Pagkatapos, guys, alimbawa, husband and wife na kayo. 
Tapos ayaw mong makipag-sex pero pinilit ka niya. Okay lang ba yan? Kasi husband and wife kayo or consider yung rape? Okay? consider po yung rape. Ha? Halimbawa, sinabi mo, Mister, pagod ako ngayon. Ayaw kong makipag-sex. Okay? Pero pinilit ka. Pwede po yung consider na. Okay? okay? So know your rights. Ha? Know your rights. Okay? That will be true, by the way, to men and women. Ha? Uh, with all due respect also to women, hindi lang po babae yung nare-rape. No? May mga lalaki din nare-rape. Okay? So, corruption or inducement to engage in prostitution or connivance. Halimbawa, sinasabi, uy, mag-sex tayo, tapos i-video, tapos i-share nyo online. Okay? So, prostitution na po yan. That could be a ground for legal separation. Tapos, imprisonment of more than six years even if na-pardon siya. Drug addiction and habitual alcoholism. I think this is the most common ground for legal separation. No? Okay? So yung mga addict, pagkatapos yung palaging umiinom. So that's also a ground for legal separation. Lesbianism or homosexuality that you have later discovered. Bigamous marriage. So yung bigamous marriage, yun yung sinasabing dalawa. Dalawa pala yung asawa. Sexual infidelity or perversion. This is also becoming more common. No? Especially among those who are working abroad. Alam mo yung dadating, dadatnan sa bahay, may iba palang kasama sa bahay yung asawa. So, that, that happens. That could be a ground for legal separation. Attempt against the life of the petitioner. Halimbawa, I filed for legal separation. Pagkatapos itong wife ko, yung wife ko, uh, na-threaten yung life ko. That could be another way for me, for us to have legal separation. And that abandonment of petition by respondent without justifiable cause. Okay, so those are the possible reasons for legal separation. Okay, now let's talk about homosexuality and ethics. As I would always repeat, huh, we are not judging them. Okay, I know some of you may belong to this society. Uh, don't worry, with all, ju uh, all due respect, tayo dyan, as a LGBTQ. Okay? Now, as healthcare professionals, we need to understand that there are health disparities that are still detected among the LGBT community. Ano pong ibig sabihin ko ng health disparities dyan? Halimbawa, um, uh, ano nga ba? If they have diseases, ha? halimbawa, if they have HIV AIDS, LGBT community daw, according to research, would have a tendency not to right away go to the hospital kasi ayaw po nilang i-judge. Okay? Or ang tendency po nila is they are not seeking consult right away because they are being judged. Halimbawa, sinasabi, bakla kasi yan kasi nagkaka-HIV. Okay? Di ba naririnig niyo pang mga ganong notion? I don't, I don't know if you're still hearing those notions. No? So we are in the healthcare society. Hindi po po pwedeng ganon. Okay? Hindi po po pwedeng ganon yung point of view natin. In fact, we need to educate them and in fact, we need to reach out to them because they are not supposed to be considered na special. Hindi po sila special part, hindi po sila special group in the community. They are actually part of the community. We are actually one with them. Okay? Hindi dapat na, hindi nga, I don't know nga if, if referring to them as LGBTQ would really be necessary. Ano? Kasi nga, tao din sila. At end of the day, tao po tayong lahat. Okay? But then look at that, no? So LGBTQ community would also have higher rates of mental problems. Bakit nga po higher rates of mental problems? Again, ha, hindi ko sinasabi na yung mga LGBTQ baliw, no? But research would say that they have high risk of mental health problems. Bakit nga pong ganon? Kasi nga meron tayong stereotyping. Okay? Stereotyping is still present in our society. Come to look at it, no? If you have friends who are LGBTQ, can they just open up in public and then say, Hi, bakla po ako. Okay? Hi, lesbiana po ako. Di ba hindi? And then the tendency is that when they have problems, they could not open up properly because they don't want the public to know that they are who they are because they are also afraid of stereotyping. Okay? So that's why if you have friends like this, ano, kapag LGBT, tapos may na-encounter na concerns, talk to them. Just like how you would deal with your usual friends, yung mga male, female friends nyo, talk to them. Okay? Because they also deserve to be heard. Okay? They are also uh, prone to substance abuse, risky sexual behavior, self-harm, and suicide. Okay? Plus, ito naman sa risky sexual behavior, I have been informed kasi of a research where in the, more, the most common STDs are found in um, gays, no? among gays and bisexuals. So most common talaga na mga STDs na nasa gays and bisexuals. I'm not judging you if you are. I'm not judging them also. But uh, guys, as nurses, we need to educate them on the importance of, uh, ano nga bang tawag natin siya? 
ABCs. Di ba? Meron tayong ABCs, yung abstinence, be faithful, and then C is the use of. Ano nga yung C on the prevention of your STD? The use of. Abstinence, be faithful. Ano yung C? It's in your maternal and child nursing. Okay? Not really contraception. What specific type of contraception na lang? What specific type of contraception? Okay? Use of condom. Ha? Use of condom. Educate nyo lang po sila. Ha? Educate nyo po sila. Okay? Educate nyo pong lahat that you need to have the ABC in order to prevent the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. Okay? Mahirap po. It's really very challenging if no, It's really very challenging if you will have multiple partners. Okay? Multiple partners kasi would expose you to STD, sexually transmitted diseases. Many a patients that they have encountered in the hospital would have history of multiple sex partners when I am dealing with HIV and when I'm dealing with AIDS patients. Huh? So kayo, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I'm not judging you if, you're, if you are already sexually active or not. But then, if you are, please be faithful. If you are not yet, please do not engage muna. Okay, it's not wise pa for you to engage on sexual act. Okay? So kindly take note of that. So we need to educate them. Okay? Alam nyo, if you will encounter patients, LGBTQ man or not, by the time that they are already in the last hours of their lives, alam mo anong sinasabi? Sinasabi kadalasan, no? Alimbawa, I've heard this from my patients. Nurse, if pwede ko lang sanang ibalik yung oras, I would be faithful. If I would, if I know that these are the consequences of my action, sana hindi ako nagwa one night stand. Okay? Plus, I don't know if you've seen cases of AIDS. Malalapo talaga kasi yung AIDS. It's as if nakakainin na lang ng infection yung katawan ng pasyente. Okay? They are in pain, bone pain. They are in skin pain. Lahat na lang ng pain na i-encounter nila when they have AIDS. Okay? So I hope that you will also realize that when you are educated. Now, self harm also and suicide at your at your stage no um being a uh, being student nurses you are not yet uh, you are not yet licensed to deal with your self harm and suicide so sir ano pong gagawin namin if there's somebody who will be texting you okay halimbawa sasabihin uy friend parang gusto ko nang mag suicide wag mong wag wag mong i-ignore ha Huwag mong sabihin na ah nagpapapansin lang naman to crush kasi ako nito di ko pinapansin okay Okay, pwede nga ganun, pero you do not ignore. So what do you do? You just talk to that individual and then you try to reach out for help. So you try to call his parents or her parents while you are talking to that individual. Okay? Hindi po natin pwedeng i-ignore. Huh? Now, the healthcare provider must carry out case and age-appropriate interventions to address this health disparity. Kung nakikita nyo, wala pong gender-appropriate interventions. Case and age appropriate po yung tinitingnan natin. Kung baga, the point there is that regardless kapag lesbian siya, gay siya, lalaki siya, or babae siya, you need to deal with the case that your patient has. Okay? You need to deal with the case that your patient has. The question in ethics on LGBTQ that you can commonly encounter would go back to religion. It would go back to religion. Okay? Roman Catholics, for example, would say, God created man and ma man and woman, okay, male and female, and they would say God did not create LGBTQ, so God 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 would disagree with LGBT. But take note ha, that this line of thinking is specific to religious denomination, and if you are a nurse dealing with these patients, wala po tayong pake sa religion, di ba? Mapa mapa Katoliko man, mapa Baptist man, mapa Muslim man, mapa kung ano pa mga, mga Buddhist man, kung ano pa mga religion dyan yung nag-i-exist, we all take care of these patients. Right? Are you getting my point? Huh? So, at the end of the day, wala. Eh sir, paano kung hindi talaga ako komportable kasi bakla siya? Okay. Baka ikaw bakla. <laughs> Kidding aside, no? So, pag hindi ka talaga komportable, you can tell your head nurse, Ma'am, I'm not comfortable taking care of these patients. Can I be shifted? No? Can I be shifted? Walang, walang problema ang ganon. That happens. Hindi lang po yan sa LGBT nangyayari. Kahit sa ibang pasyente, pwedeng mangyari na hindi ka komportable. So you can request for reassignment. Now, let's talk about artificial reproduction. So artificial reproduction is gaining popularity. No? Marami na po. And the question there is that, is it okay to proceed with artificial reproduction considering that 
is it an act of God or an act of man? Eh, yan naman yung question eh. Act of God or act of man? Artificial arguments on or those who disagree with artificial reproduction would say, we don't do that. Hindi natin dapat gawin yan kasi act of, God, act of man yan. Hindi yan act of God. Eh, life is a gift from God. That's their argument. Life is the gift from God. So it needs to be given by God and it's not, it's not supposed to be done by man. Okay? Now, let's talk about artificial reproduction. One is artificial insemination. So in your artificial insemination, as you might have touched also in your maternal and child nursing, what's happening is that sperm, okay, ito pong injection na nakikita po natin. That's the sperm okay, here that is being inserted through the female reproductive tract. Tapos, i-insert po siya until fertilization would occur in the fallopian tree. Okay? So, it's inserted up to the level of the uterus. Pagkatapos, the sperm class would swim towards your fallopian tube where fertilization would take place. Now, it's considered to be a less radical and sophisticated procedure to facilitate consumption in an unnatural way. Ano po yung ginagawa natin dyan? Your patient class would be monitored by the doctor. And then the doctor, through an ultrasound, would be able to detect by the time that the ovary already released the egg cell. So, tira timing ng doctor yan. Uy, ngayon, mag-release na yung egg cell. Pag-release ng egg cell, ibibigay na yung sperm papasok okay, to induce fertilization. That is artificial insemination. To remember that class, insemination, insemination, may pinapasok po tayong semen, insemination. Okay? That's your artificial insemination. Next, you have your in vitro fertilization. Okay? What, what's being done in in vitro fertilization? So, class, the egg is being harvested. Yung egg po natin, hinaharvest. Okay? Egg cell, that's for women. It's being harvested. And then, pag sinabi ko pong in vitro, is it in the laboratory or is it in the human body? Pag sinabi ko pong in vitro fertilization, laboratory po nga ba siya or human bud? In vitro. Okay? Meaning class, sa lab po siya ginagawa. In other words, class, the egg is fertilized already by the sperm in the laboratory. Okay? By the time class that the egg is already fertilized, that's the time students that it will be inserted. It will be inserted towards the... the um uterus of the woman. Okay? It will be inserted to the uterus wherein implantation would occur. Wherein implantation would occur. Okay? So yan po yung ginagawa. Fertilization happens outside. Pagkatapos class, um, it is being implanted inside the individual. Okay? So kindly take note of that. Okay, now, so that's your in vitro fertilization. Next, let's talk about surrogate motherhood. Pag sinabi ko pong surrogate motherhood, it's facilitation of conception to a third party um, reproduction. Okay, so pag sinabi ko pong third party reproduction, halimbawa, ano? So, kami ni Mises, halimbawa. Um, so, Kung kami ni Missy, salimbawa, uh, ano nga ba yung mangyayari? Halimbawa, gusto namin, gusto namin magka-anak. Pero ayaw ng misis ko na magdala ng anak. Or ayaw ng misis ko na maging buntis. We can opt for surrogate motherhood. Pag sinabi kong surrogate motherhood, what would be happening is that? Okay, what would be happening is that? Um, uh, what would be happening is that? Ano nga ba? we will be hiring a surrogate mother and that surrogate mother will be the one to carry the fertilized egg. Okay? So, it's facilitate conception through a third-party reproduction. Now, meron po dalawang option, traditional surrogacy at saka gestational surrogacy. Pag sinabi ko pong traditional surrogacy, yung ginagamit po is yung egg ng third party or ang egg po ng, ng surrogate mother yung ginagamit. Tapos, halimbawa, sperm po. Pag gestational surrogacy, egg ng wife ko, sperm ko, tapos ipapasok siya doon sa surrogate mother. Okay? Now, kadalasan class, there are medical implications on surrogate motherhood. No? 
pag sinabi ko pong pag sinabi ko pong medical implications on surrogate motherhood ibig sabihin may dahilan naman sila okay may dahilan sila kung bakit sila nagsu surrogate mother halimbawa those people with uterine problems no may mga pasyente po tayong mai-encounter that were in they have habitual abortion pag sinabi ko pong habitual abortion parang bawat pregnancy na lang hindi po nagiging successful so oftentimes they opt for surrogate motherhood kasi nga po may problema baka dun sa uterus ng mother okay? and then there are also instances na tulad ng sabi ko by choice lang halimbawa sa sabihin ng wife na ayaw ko maging pregnant ang hirap ang hirap no so ano lang yari na sa surrogate motherhood this is becoming very common already in the US no and in other Western countries so ano po yung nangyayari Usually po yung lahat ng expenses pinifinance ng family pagkatapos by the time that the child will be birth, uh, will be born by the th- by the time that the child will be born ano nga uh, it will be under the name of the parents already. Okay? So may mga legal papers lang na inaaccomplish na kahit siya yung magdadala ng sanggol the sanggol or the child belongs to the couple who had the surrogate mother. Okay? So those are some of the those are some of the modern things that you can encounter already in our setting. Huh? So nakikita na po natin sa setting natin yung mga ganito. And then the question is, is it allowed or is it ethical for us to do it? From our end as nurses and healthcare professionals, one thing lang naman po yung hinahanap natin, there should be your informed consent. Okay? Informed consent. And babalik din po ako sa suggestion ko, na once na hindi ka na komportable on assisting the procedure because it's against your religion, You could always tell your haters. You could always tell your haters. Ha? Na ma'am, hindi pa ako comfortable on assisting on this person. Okay? Ganun lang po yun kasimple. Now, bakit po kailangan ng informed consent? Because guys, if you would look at these procedures, they are not 100% effective. Ha? Baka nag-artificial insemination tapos sabihin, ah, bakit hindi ako nabuntes? Di ba gusto ko nang mabuntes? Gusto ko nang magkaanak? Bakit wala? Kasi nga class, hindi naman yan 100%. Okay? Uh, in vitro fertilization, hindi din po yan magiging 100% successful. Okay? May mga risk din po yan. Pagkatapos, surrogate motherhood, may mga risk din po yan related to the health of the surrogate mother, the health of the egg, and then the health of the sperm. So they're not 100% effective rate. So you need, you need to have informed consent. And just like any other procedures in the healthcare setting, it is coupled with risk and benefits. There will always be risk and benefits. Okay? Now, you have any questions so far?